Today, we're gonna do the king of barbecue short ribs. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for the whole episode because it's gonna be so damn good. Can't wait for this. This is Jones for Flavor. My name is Brendan Jones. Let's get started. This episode is one I've been waiting a long time to do. Absolutely nothing beats this in terms of delicious barbecue in my mind. It is a fatty and tough cut of beef, but if you allow yourself to be patient enough, you'll end up with a tender, juicy cut of meat. I don't have the time to do it at a low heat, so I'll be doing it hot and fast at a temperature of around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. With the intense intramuscular fat inside the ribs, it's very hard to overcook this. Undercooking it, however, would be a tragedy. So the absolute minimum temperature this should be pulled off at is 200 degrees Fahrenheit internally. The maximum I would say would be about 215 to 220 degrees. Now before I start cooking, I'm actually going to remove whatever silver skin I can and whatever excess fat I don't want on. Silver skin is essentially what it sounds like. It's a translucent shiny tissue on meat that should be removed as it's tough and not desirable. You'll want to get a sharp knife and cut underneath it as not to cut off too much meat. Since short ribs have a lot of fat, you can actually remove all the fat on top and not have to worry about drying out the meat. The only reason I left some on is because I was pressed for time. When applying seasoning, you can use a binder like oil or mustard. Instead, I'll be relying on my salt to draw moisture from the meat to make the surface tacky. You can use whatever seasoning you like, but I'll be sticking to just salt and pepper. If you have the time, I suggest letting the salt sit 5 minutes to give the salt time to draw out the moisture. Remember to not rub the seasoning in, but instead pat it as rubbing it can over season on some parts of the meat and under season at other parts. Since this is a big piece of meat, you're going to want to season all sides and remember to pat it in. Now when it comes to the membrane, on pork ribs I would say remove it, but on these big boys you're going to want to leave it on as that is the only thing that will keep the bones from falling off. I like to push the ribs into the cutting board after to make sure I can pick up as much leftover seasoning as not to waste it. Time to set up our smoker. I'll insert my probe to track the temperature of my ribs so I don't pull it off too early or too late. I'm going to preheat this wood before throwing it in the fire as it helps combust quicker. Throughout the cook you should spray with water or beef broth every 30 minutes to prevent the outside from drying out. Once the meat is at the point where you can stick your probe in without any resistance, it can then be wrapped in tin foil and then insulated in a towel in a cooler to let rest for at least an hour. It took about seven hours, we're done. We got this beautiful dino rib, massive. 
don't know if you can see, I'm sure you can see, it's a huge, massive smoke ring. I pulled it off at about 208 degrees. If I were to do it again next time, I'll probably go a little bit longer, maybe 215. But man, it's still gonna be phenomenal. This thing has to jiggle when you're done with it. So before you pull it off, make sure it has a nice jiggle, otherwise it's just gonna be too tough for you to eat. Anyways, let's get on to it. Mmm. That is phenomenal. Like I said, this is the king of barbecue. If you have the money, definitely do it. Totally worth it. And if you had a choice between brisket or short rib, definitely go short rib. Every time. Doesn't even compare. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna end this video. Can't wait to eat the rest of that. Anyways, have a good one. See you later on the next one.